Well, hello, that's me again. Today is June 24th. It is Monday. And uh, I was, uh, I wanted to do this video actually last night, but uh, then I decided, you know what, I still wouldn't probably release it uh, before because things might change. But um, let's get to uh, the issue which everybody discusses now. And I want, before we go into this, I want to make statements for people to understand. Terrorism is the weapon of the weak. Uh, when you do not have capability to do something, you resort yourself to the terrorism, which is, of course, killing uh, civilians with the you know, uh, uh, reason and uh, uh, cause of making a statement, political statement. For example, um, Krokus City attack, uh, terrorist attack made by primarily Tajiks and immigrants, which were rec recruited by the uh, Ukrainian uh, and uh, British spe special services, uh, and killing a bunch of the civil uh, civilians, innocent people. Uh, so it's a political statement. It's just like, we can get you. That's the only thing. And uh, basically what happened uh, to last two days in Russia, for example, starting with the terrorist attacks by Wahhabi cell, which was operating under the uh, auspices of their father, his children and his immediate relatives were part of the Wahhabi cell extremists. Wahhabism is forbidden in Russia by, you know, the law. And... Um, the idea was actually, yeah, to kill many pe people. They they did. I mean, including, uh, sadly, 13 uh, police officers have been killed of the Dagestan area. And people already reacted to that, that it was obviously a classic terrorist act. And it was most, not all most likely, it's already established that much of it had been organized and financed from abroad. Considering the fact that Wahhabism was one of the major factors, I mean, if not the major factor in a wars which Russia fought in Chechnya. And, well, that's what, for example, Ramzan Kandyrov called them, those Wahhabis, they call him sh them shaitans, which is, are devils, essentially. So, uh, that part. But then, of course, we have the Sevastopol. It is, was one thing to get armed to the teeth and go out shooting, you know, bystanders and, for example, slitting the throat of the uh, priest of the Orthodox uh, Church in uh, their band. And then, of course, attacking synagogue. So, I mean, it, it is so, I mean, over the top, the uh, con commun uh, connections with the ISIS. And ISIS is the American and Israeli, but I, I don't think so Israel was in any way directly uh, involved in that. But ISIS is the American project in many respects. So, and then we have this. We have Sevastopol. Now, uh, in terms of Sevastopol, uh, what can I say? There are... Uh, Target was this. As you can see yourself, this is the Bellback airfield. And this airfield is very close to the shore of, uh, uh, near Sevastopol, which is across the, as you can see, yourself, there are many combat aircraft. Some of those combat aircraft, actually, which are the part of the uh, aviation component of the Black Sea Fleet, nowadays, some of those aircraft are actually fake. They are, you know, inflated aircraft to, you know, create the confusion. But as you can see yourself, this is a very serious military installation, and this is how it looks like on this map. As you can see yourself, I uh, underlined it, and it's called Bellback Airport. Of course, it's not airport per se, it's combat airfield, and it's next to the wonderful beaches in the uh, villages, which are uh, uh, hamlets of Lubimovka, and of course, famous Uchkuivka Park, which you would go out when I lived in Sevastopol, go to the artillery bay, which still has the pier there, and you will take the ferry or the what is called the sea trams, and the wonderful beaches in there, and uh, you can also go to the northern uh, side of Sevastopol and drive there. But usually people were taking the uh, wonderful, uh, those little, you know, uh, boats, uh, motor boats, and just disembark and have fun. Wonderful sandy beaches. So, uh, obviously, Ukraine, well, it's not Ukraine, it's United States. Let's stop pretending this garbage. United States decided to attack Bilbeck Airport and launched five attackers. 
Uh, there comes a ballistic missile. Actually, it's not as sophisticated as many people try to pretend them to be. In reality, it's a standard uh, 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 f uh, target for the uh, Russian air defense systems, including the fact, for example, that S-1 Panzer just recently shot down six of them. So they launched five with the, uh, what is called cluster munition uh, warhead at Belbeka airport. Four of them are shot down immediately. One which is difficult uh, to say now what happened it could have been i don't i don't think so their uh, uh electronic warfare really works on them but it was somehow uh deflected so it also didn't hit uh airport but it discharged part of its uh, uh, uh cluster munitions over their beaches with the civilian people with women children as the result five of people are confirmed dead so i believe two of them are children 151 are wounded, bunch of children. Some of the wounds are horrendous because that's what you get from the cluster munition. And what can I say? Um, as I already stated, uh, terrorism is the uh, weapon of the weak. United States is weak militarily. It cannot really fight serious war and win it. It never could actually. But obviously they had this, you know, break with the, I mean, utterly incompetent and pathetic Saddam's army and they decided that they're really good at it. Now, when you look attentively at those uh, series of the terrorist acts in Russia and actually attacking civilians on the beach, which is state-sponsored terrorism, uh, you have to keep in mind attackums and M270 uh, vehicles, tracked vehicles, uh, for example, which carry this, uh, they are operated by the U.S. personnel. That means those people drive those things. They do their what is called topographic tie-in because in order for you to launch ballistic type of the projectile or missile, you have to have a very good tie-in topographically in order for you to be able to calculate your uh, flight task. And then you enter the data and you enter the targets, coordinates. And then the computer calculates to you what, how, and the whole thing flies. This is done by the Americans. It, it's not done by Ukrainians. United States uh, people do not allow Ukrainians to operate anything which is provided in the, for, by the United States, which is considered their high end, such as, for example, Patriot Pack 3. And the same goes for the attackums. Same goes for the, for example, storm shadows, which are actually in, in scalp, uh, which are, as you can see yourself, are being shot in the industrial quantities. Here's another of the, uh, you know, storm shadow shut down. Uh, this is the war of NATO, and it is a terrorist war of NATO against Russia because they are cowards. They are covering, you know, uh, behind the backs of Ukrainians who are being uh, annihilated, as you can see yourself. Let's take a look for yesterday. Uh, another almost 2,000 killed and wounded. Uh, seven tanks and APC, 61 armored vehicles, artillery and mortars, 40, 75 uh, UAVs shut down. So it's a slaughter. And West and NATO, especially those people, the only thing they left is to attack Russian civilians. Because many people in Washington really do not mind seeing many Russian children, women, old people killed. They just, you know, operate with this incre incre incredible visceral hatred of Russians. And, um, yes, uh, for example, when people asked about Pentagon spokesperson, uh, uh, yes, well, actually it is, well, it was yesterday, essentially, that Pentagon refused to comment on the strike on Sevastopol by American attackers. The Pentagon is aware of reports of the shelling of Sevastopol by American attackers' missiles, but it has nothing to say about this. A representative of the U.S. Department of Defense told RIA News, we have seen these reports and we have nothing to say. Oh, correct. They have nothing to say because essentially how they operate, they operate against civilians. They've been doing this from the get-go because obviously they cannot fight real war because they will be defeated with the catastrophic losses to them. And this reality creates this desperation and especially considering the strategic reality when you essentially being defeated, combined West, what's, what's left? 
Well, uh, Mr. Putin already stated that Russia will most likely arm North Korea with the weapon systems, which will make sure that uh, South Korea, which is South Korean army, is essentially, you know, once God forbid something starts, is uh, <clears throat> becoming the part of the U.S. Uh, uh, army and is being commanded by the United States. So, but United States doesn't like <clears throat> losses, and uh, that's why they cover them constantly. But I would say that whatever uh, was uh, happening in Sevastopol, those people, those crews, they will be found out, found out, so they will be hunted down and either brought to justice or will be killed. So uh, I would suggest if they are there, they better go and find good, uh, find good uh, 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 plastic surgeon and change their identities. It might still help them because basically they are terrorists. And, you know, when you look at Antwerp, yeah, this is what primarily NATO does. It really loves to uh, kill civilians. That's the only thing. In terms of real warfare, they are not good. So, but here is another thing which we need to uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, we have Mr. Medvedev, who is absolutely, uh, you know, uh, how to put it, uh, very straightforward. And this is uh, his uh, uh, part of his speech a couple of days ago that uh, Americans continue to treat everyone as complete morons, which is true. Uh, this is actually the, uh, uh, very much the uh, uh, feature of uh, sociopaths because they think that they are better than everybody else, while in reality is quite opposite is true most of the time. Imagine if Nazi Germany during World War II had approached the USSR with a proposal to put the issue of limiting the production of any weapon, tanks, airplanes, or BM-13 Katusha on the separate negotiating track, like let's limit their production. Absurd, insane, insane <clears throat> derivings of the madman? Absolutely. But the United States is quite seriously suggesting that we negotiate a new treaty on strategic <laughs> offensive arms reduction. They will supply the neo-Nazis with all kinds of weapons, including long-range missiles and airplanes, and discuss a new START treaty with us. Uh, Mr. Medvedev is uh, kind of, how to put it politely, he is uh, very diplomatic speaking about this. In reality, Russia is not going to negotiate anything in terms of the strategic uh, arms limitations with the United States, uh, including because of the fact that United States lost the race there. In terms of the liberty system, United States is not even in the same league as Russia, and Russia has the overwhelming uh, technological advantage in terms of the <coughs> delivery system of the strategic um, uh, uh, nuclear warheads. Well, it can do it also conventionally. So why would you negotiate this, especially people who are continuing to uh, you know, do basically terrorist acts against Russian civilians? Absolutely. So there is no point uh, talking to Washington. And <clears throat> basically, especially after uh, Washington, well, we yeah, closed another, you know, uh, uh, diplomatic center, visa centers for Russians uh, uh, and Americans traveling to Russia. In New York, what, what can I say? I mean, those people are, well, how to put it, uh, when you look attentively there uh, at uh, administration, Biden administration, collectively they are mad, but they're also schizophrenic because they have <clears throat> different types of their factions vying for the control of, uh, you know, well, Biden, okay? Uh, he, the man should be in the nursing home, and he is being abused, obviously. But it's primarily Blinken, Sullivan's, and, you know, Austin's, and people of this nature who fight for their uh, collective Biden, so to speak. And uh, as you might expect, nothing good comes out of it, especially when you deal with people who are militarily incompetent. And uh, uh, as I already stated, they're Terrorism is the uh, uh, weapon of the weak. So, and that brings us to another interesting uh, uh, part about Pentagon spokesperson, who says that, um, and what is was explained by Russian, uh, the terrorist attack Eve occurred on Sunday at 12:15. Moscow time. According to the Minister of Defense, the armed forces of Ukraine tried to hit Sevastopol with five United States attack arms missiles with cluster warheads. The Russian military shot down four of them, but one deviated under the influence of air defense and exploded over the city. According to the latest data, well, that's what they go calling, that's what we are. Um, I already told you, uh, 151 people were injured, of which 82 were hospitalized, 55 adults and 27 children. How um, 
Well, remember, uh, America w wanted to talk a lot about the moral ground, you know, high ground, about beacon, be, being beacon of democracy. Today, we are looking at the NATO as indeed, you know, North Atlantic terrorist organization, and that's what they are. So, coming to the more fundamental thing, and uh, Moscow obviously, you know, blames Washington for uh, deadly Crimea strike, and Washington bears responsibility for the latest Ukrainian missile strike strike on the city of Sevastopol in Russian Crimea. The Russian Defense Minister stated so, and we already know the, uh, pretty much what happened with attackums, and there is no uh, uh, actually necessity to comment on this anymore. But in conclusion of this segment, I want to show you something which is absolutely. June 12th, which tells you uh, who those uh, people are. And by the way, these are also people who are, well, you know, prepared by NATO instructors. Uh, here are uh, 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 Russian soldiers going into one of the uh, dugouts of the, in the front line after they took yet another position, and Russians moving forward constantly, every day. So, as they say, they have like dogs on a chain. Russian army fighters found Ukrainian soldiers chained. You have two of those uh, soldiers chained, they're killed, and uh, they're chained by their comrades, quote unquote, so they cannot leave. You see yourself, you know, and the Russians didn't come up with this, Russians don't do the uh, staging of things of this nature. So that pretty much explains to you the nature of the enemy. And as I already stated, armed forces of Ukraine have been trained uh, by the uh, uh, American and other NATO uh, instructors. So there you go. Killing children, civilian chaining people, barrier troops shooting at each other uh, at the backs. Wow, you can see yourself with such type of the force, you're certainly going to win nothing and that's what is happening and that's uh, i want to reiterate again this is precisely when why we have this spike in the terrorist activity in russia because as i already repeated again i will reiterate it again terrorism is the weapon of the weak i mean when you look at those bunch of the cretins from nato and from brussels especially from london those, those are chihuahuas i mean they're nobodies all the the sand horse is a joke of the military institution as is uh, uh imperial imperial so to speak i mean you know uh, british general stuff this is a joke i mean those are amateurs people who do not understand what they are dealing with so uh, but yet they still want to you know uh, declare war on russia that's the latest of them so sure I mean, yes, why not? <laughs> so let them declare war on Russia. I don't know whom they is gonna send. Uh, the regiment of cooks. So and uh, you know, semi-literate bunch of the Cretans from Sandhurst who will know how to run the freaking company, let alone battalion or brigade. So, but yeah, sure. So that's pretty much explains to visceral hatred and viciousness of those people because they know they are losers. They are weak. And as such, they behave like, you know, war criminals. So now I want to go and uh, take a look at something which is very important in terms of understanding the uh, issue uh, of my issue with media and all those political science personalities, not only in the United States but also in Russia, because as I already stated on many times, media in general, with the exception of the journalists such as, <clears throat> for example, my friend Politvera or Marat Hyrulin in Russia, the rest of it, most of them, not all, there are some many heroic military correspondents who are doing their job excellently. Some of them get killed, but the rest of it is nothing more than the show and the people who are, well, yeah, I, I, at some point of time, I will show you the definition of who they are. It's it. So as you can see yourself, I'm not just being biased, as many people would accuse me, towards the Western media. I'm actually calling them also in Russia. And so we have RT. RT loves to give their uh, tribune to all kinds of those, you know, PhDs in international relations and whatever the hell they are. And so she here is the article by Mr. Istomin, uh, as you can see yourself, four days ago go that Russia fears a NATO attack, here is why. As its Ukrainian proxy faces defeat, the US-led bloc is becoming increasingly reckless. Where this uh, will this hubris lead us? So I have to immediately state, 
I, unlike political scientists, do not look on their rhetoric. It's rhetoric. It's fluffy. I look at forces and means, and I look at their correlations, and I'm interested in the logistics. How the NATO can attack? The only way NATO can attack Russia is by using of the long-range missiles. Period. In terms of the long range, I already explained that they are not that long range. The only thing which NATO has of real serious concern for the heartland of Russia is Tomahawk and Jassams. But they are also standard targets for the Russian air defense. But, so Mr. Istomin says that such judgments are based on the assumption that the West, uh, uh, despite its aggressiveness and arrogance, is guided in its policies by the rational balance of benefits and costs based on the existing balance of power. Past experience, however, However, does not convince us that the U.S.-led bloc is capable of pursuing a balanced, calculated course. Well, that's correct. We've been talking about this. Well, I was talking about for more than 10 years that actually there are a bunch of uh, people who are totally incompetent. And then, of course, me, of course, Mr. Istomin comes to the core of his article. And I will, will explain why, I mean, I have issues, which is, uh, he makes a correct decision. So, and here he, he, he talks about the divided consciousness of the West. The growing bitterness of Western co uh, uh, countries towards Russia, it's not bitterness, it's hatred. So the guy is obviously, you can sense immediately the type of the pro-Western liberal, who he is, by the way, worked in uh, Harvard, which immediately is a red flag. And uh, so it's not bitterness, it's hatred, visceral. And it's a bunch, of, a part of this hatred is based on the uh, racial and uh, you know, metaphysical issues. So, it's consistent with the way in which they look at armed conflicts in terms of the logic of preventive war. Rather than linking uh, um, interstate clashes to aggressive opportunism, this model sees escalation as a product of fears about the future. The belief that their situation will deteriorate over time leads states to take increasingly adventurous steps, up to and including the use of force. Actually, it is definitely correct as a factor, as one of many, not just only factor, but certainly it's a major one. And so he talks about throughout history, major wars have usually been the product of this preemptive logic. Um, yeah, it's all good. It is, was uh, published in, uh, on uh, June 20th, four days ago, uh, in, uh, on RT. And it was the, published in the, one of those Valtais pub publications, whatever that is. But let me remind you something which I constantly stress, and uh, that uh, you cannot allow political scientists who have zero understanding of what is going on uh, really go and start, you know, uh, not spewing, but, you know, juggling with all those so pseudo-intellectual military constructs because they don't have necessary background to deal with them. So let me remind you. Let's go, you know, uh, you know, rewind back seven plus years ago. Remember, look at this thing. And uh, I write this, as you can see yourself, April 17th, 2017. I wrote the <coughs> 3,300 uh, words article, and it was called Assessing Russian Military Strengths, and is America seeking preventive war to forestall the rise of Russian power? Well, so Mr. Istomin is kind of seven plus years, actually it's ten, ten years late in, you know, trying to pretend that political, uh, those political scientists and that type of people really have any handle on the war. In that article, you can go uh, back to Un's review and read it, and this is when I warned about the fact that the problem and what we are facing is the fact that those people in Pentagon, CIA, White House, and NATO, they have no clue what they're dealing with. And that's when, that's when after that, my first book came out. And that's when I explained that uh, militarily and economically, Russia is a monster, already was in 2017, that all this data, and all this data, especially on the combat effectiveness of Russian weapons, which have been proven beyond the, uh, you know, shadow of a doubt on the battlefields of the real serious war, uh, I mean, uh, that West wasn't in the same league, and that they were miscalculating. And this is when my uh, first book later this ma uh, that uh, year uh, was written, and, well, it was being written as I wrote this article. 
But the point is, why do they suddenly recognize it now, so many years after what is, uh, has happened? Well, because in order for you to understand what is going on, you have to understand what is military basis of everything, including this political rhetoric, because as I state nonstop, wrote four books about it, wrote a bunch of articles, warfare is the geopolitical tool of the first order. Warfare of the 21st century is extremely complex. It is as complex as anything out there, you know, be that, you know, astrophysics or, you know, uh, neuroscience, what, what have you. It is very complex. It is very engineer and STEM driven. And you need to understand what you're dealing with. But that is why this delay of more than, well, from that article. In reality, if you go to my blog, you will see yourself that I was writing about it since, the, uh, to, since 2014. That actually, when you live in the, this confabulated word, uh, world of the echo chambers, when you pretend that you won World War II, when you pretend that you understand operations, and you don't study anything which matters, when your military views are formed by the Nazi uh, and Wehrmacht officers who got their ass handed to them so what you have you have only propaganda and we can see it now and that brings us to this point back to Sevastopol back to the uh, you know uh, terrorist acts uh, happening in Russia they will continue precisely because let's uh, I need this number so for people to understand and I will quote my friend Vladimir Tokhan he has three degrees, and he obviously a oh, former officer uh, operator of the Central Apparatus Ministry of Defense. And he stated, and I quote, just to move the regiment, regiment 1,200 about people, you know, with all its equipment, you need about 189 rail cars. That's a single regiment. So... Can you uh, calculate now how the European NATO will try to attack Russia? Of course they will not. They will try to basically, you know, spoil things. They will try to, you know, uh, you know, poke bear. And they will try to continue the, with the terrorist acts. Because in the end, if it comes down to it, and if they really decide to attack, and the only way they can attack, the only way they can attack for Russia to make any kind of the, the decision, allegedly favorable, which it will not, is to attack the strategic nuclear weapons. Once that happens, head-on response flies back, literally, in, uh, you know, almost, you know, instantly. And United States and the whole West will be wiped off the map. So, and that has to be understood. So, don't uh, take all this rhetoric too much seriously, too, too seriously. It's... Um, it's a lot of desperation in it, and this is one of the first signs of where things are going. So, and this is what I wanted to tell you today, because obviously they once again pushed me away from what I was planning to do, and here it is, I need to do this now. So, and as always, guys, uh, those who like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, and those who can afford, please support me on Patreon, or buy me a coffee too. I would really appreciate this, and this is what... Uh, really help, uh, helps and actually provides for me uh, to keep going. And I, as always, I want to express my profound gratitude to my wonderful patrons. Guys, I know who you are. Guys, I cannot always respond to each of your requests. And believe me, I simply do not have time. It's not that I ignore you or that I don't want to communicate with you. But there's so much going on that, as you can see yourself, I some people say do it every day. I can't do it every day. Okay? But... It is what it is. So what can I say? Have a nice rest of your work week and I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.